Today I'm trying what might be one of the best portable antennas for QRP DX. Especially if you're limited with height and can't put up anything more than six or seven meters. It's called the Bobtail Curtain. Some time ago I built one for 70 centimeters. This time I'll describe one for 20 meters. It has a lot of features that make it attractive for portable QRPing, especially if you want to seek the long distance DX. What I've just drawn is a half square. A quarter wavelength up, half wavelength across, and another quarter wavelength down. If you want to feed it with coaxial cable, you feed it in the top corner here, or it's a little bit more convenient if you're portable and just want to feed it down at the bottom, but here the impedance is high. Therefore, you need something like a tuned circuit or L-match antenna coupler, and that will allow you to operate the antenna. Anyway, the half square has a radiation pattern that is broadside, like a figure eight around the longer wire, and in theory, it consists of two quarter wavelength verticals separated by half wavelength. So it's the verticals that do the radiating. So unlike a flat top dipole, it's actually a vertically polarized antenna. This makes it a good choice if you are operating by the salt water or even a swamp where you don't have very much height with the antenna yet the angle of radiation is very low, which makes it great for DXing. Anyway, if we extend the half square further, we add another half wavelength across here, and another quarter wavelength here, then we have the bobtail. Now it's twice the width, but a benefit of it is it's got more gain. And again, we can feed it down here at the bottom. Now, right here, that's another advantage of the bobtail. Even though we've now got three verticals here, again, the radiation pattern is broadside. It's like a figure eight, but narrower than you might be accustomed to with a half wave dipole. The beam width, I think, is only like 30 degrees. Unlike, say, if you're building phase verticals or ground planes where you need lots of radials down the bottom to give you good performance, especially if you're portable, that can take a long time to set up and take down. With this, your ground requirements are much more modest. You could just have a metal plate, uh, even make it out of kitchen foil, something like that. That will be okay as your counterpoise. You might have seen my earlier video of it from a few months ago where it was just some aluminium foil with some plastic book covering and it rolls out. It's really light. It can be packed up easily. Anyway, that is what I use as the counterpoise. And of course, here at the feed point, it's high impedance and then you have your antenna coupler like an L-match and then that goes to your transceiver. A lot of antennas are like this, hunched with their main current being at the bottom or the middle. Especially if they're not very high, that won't give the best DX performance, particularly at low angles. In contrast, the bobtail concentrates its current near the top of the antenna. That gives the best possible signal at the furthest distance. Here's the dimensions I used. The vertical parts are 4.74 meters and the horizontal parts 12.3 meters. 
An interesting thing about it is that 12.3 metres is more than a half wavelength. It's nearer to 0.6 of a wavelength on 14 megahertz. The reason why I use that dimension is that when you try and model this antenna, you got the most gain from a bit more than a half wavelength. Other references also mentioned that as well. It's only 4.74 metres high, which is a big advantage if you are using a telescoping squid pole. In fact, if you had a 9 metre squid pole, you may be able to build a full-sized bobtail even for 30 metres or 10 megahertz, where the upright is, again, less than 9 metres. In fact, it's only about 7.5 metres, so that would be fine. These are the dimensions for it. I'm just using wire, speaker wire that I've salvaged from somewhere. The thing is though, it is quite wide, nearly 25 meters across, which makes it just over the width of a full size dipole for seven megahertz, if it's got a flat top. I've got the whole thing on a reel. All of this wire is on one reel, and then the middle bit is on a piece of plastic that I've cut out with some scissors, actually the top of a margarine container, and that allows me to roll this wire on. So it's very compact, doesn't take up a lot of room, and you can get it out portable. The main thing that contributes to its bulk are that you'll be taking three poles. You might just be able to get away with two poles, but you may then have some sag in the middle, and it's better that the middle is a flat top as possible. So I've got two poles, about eight or nine meters on the end, and a middle pole that can be only, say, five or six meters, and that can keep the whole thing up. Or if you are in an area where there's a tree or support in the right places, you might be able to use that. So you've got these hanging down vertically, and then the horizontal bit across the top. You do have on the ends of these quite high voltages, so make sure that you or other people can't touch them. The bobtail curtain doesn't look a lot, but there's actually a lot of benefits, especially if you're into DX, where you want a low takeoff angle. As a bank of three verticals, that's particularly good if you don't have much height, but you do want a low angle of radiation and you are near salt water or maybe even conductive ground. In terms of its performance, if you look at antenna modeling software and do some plots and take the radiation at five degree takeoff angle, not 20 or 30 degrees that a lot of antennas have their maximum gain, but go for five degrees and then compare different antennas. I think you'll find that something like the bobtail is a top performer for those low takeoff angles. Definitely better than a horizontal dipole unless it's up very high. And even better than antennas that you'd think are good DX performers like quarter wave, half wave, five eighth verticals. With a bobtail, it's three verticals, but you need much less effort with the grounding system and you've got a good performing DX antenna on 14 megahertz. Another potential benefit is, especially if you've made the decision to have an antenna coupler, is you'll be able to use the bobtail on other bands. Now the radiation pattern will change somewhat. I had a look on the modeling software on 10 megahertz, which is another good DX band. The radiation pattern is fairly similar to 14 megahertz. You've still got the main lobes broadside to the uh, horizontal bit, but the nulls are not quite as severe. If you were to go up to 18 and 21 megahertz, then the pattern breaks up. 
instead of having dominant lobes coming off broadside where it's a narrow figure eight, it's something else. It's more like a clover leaf. And at seven megahertz, I had a, had a look at that on the antenna modeling thing and the lobes seem to be in line with the wire. So out in this general direction with the null that's broadside. So an interesting antenna that's got some different directionality on different bands. And depending on where you are, that may be convenient for you. QSL, 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 over. Roger, Roger, PC. Yeah, you're very, very weak, unfortunately. This is Kilo 3, Yankee Echo. Uh, this is HP9, November Bravo Golf uh, returning. You are very, very, very weak. In the clear, in the clear, you are on five. Uh, we are three and four. Three and four in the clear, PC. Three and four. Uh, right back to you, Victor Kilo 3, Yankee Echo, HP9, November Bravo Go. Uh, now I could, uh, I could uh, understand your whole uh, last transmission. Uh, if the band is quiet, uh, there is no problem at all to receive you. Uh, it's really great to work a portable station with QRP. Good evening. Name is Gary. We're located near Birmingham, or Central East. I'll give you a report on the next over. From England, DK3MB, G0FWS. Okay, Victor Kilo 3, Yankee Echo. QSL, 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 over. Yeah, 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 I said you're around about the five and five mark with me, but uh, always nice to work a portable station, Peter. I'm using uh, a Flex 6400 with 400 watts and uh, a 10 element log periodic at 60 feet.
I'd really recommend considering the Bobtail Curtain Antenna. Have a look at antenna modeling. Uh, you can download free programs, put in Bobtail uh, dimensions like this, maybe optimize it, change different dimensions, have a look at the radiation pattern on various angles, and try different frequencies and see what you get. And if you like its performance, or even if you don't, let me know in the comments. But yeah, I really think the Bobtail has not been spoken about enough as an effective antenna for portable QRP operating. So I hope this video remedies that and you build a bobtail and you work lots of DX.